up, y'all? Your girl Gigi is back. We got love slash like after lockup to talk about. I mean, this episode is actually a previous in the episode. We had the turn up on Michael and Sarah's side. We had the crying and heartbreak on Marcelino and Brittany's side. And then there's a little bit of switching dynamics for me when it comes to Andrea and Lamar. I'm starting to see that, Andrea, you really are controlling. And you like your men. So you're one of those women who have to know point blank everywhere the men is at. Like, if he's not doing what you said then it's got to be wrong. I know that's probably got a bit of that Mormonism to do in you, which is another reason why Lamar's ass don't want to move to Utah because it's just some cult type shit. But we're going to get into all that. But before we do, let's take a quick pause break for those of you who haven't hit that subscribe or like button. Go ahead and do that right now. Smash the button. Okay? You got it? All right. Let's get into the review. So we open back up with Angela and Tony. Now, Angela's sitting outside in her car pulling some CSI, you know, type stuff because she done told Tony uh, that she was actually going to stay at Donna Faye's house, good old Donna Faye, her sister. Uh, but really, she ain't. She's staying outside lurking to see if he's going to pull some dumb criminal shit, some crooked stuff, and, you know, leave the house or have some other stupid prostitute bride come into her home. Now, Tony, for one time, was doing the right thing. After she stayed outside and smoked about five, six cigarettes, she went inside and crawled into the bed. Now, at first, I thought I was seeing pillows in the bed, but then I see Angelo. Why is Tony sleeping in your motherfucking mattress? He needs to be on the couch, on an air mattress, on a cot, hell for all I care. He could pick up the pillows on the couch and put them on the floor. A sleeping bag. But ain't no way in hell a man who cheated on me with some prostitutes and was running a goddamn drug a ring, a drug ring basically at Motel 6, is coming back and laying in my bed. Like, Angela, I'm really starting to think you was honestly a weak sum of my gun, okay? You are weak as hell. Like, she crawled in the bed, go to sleep next up, you know, the next morning, wake up for work. And Tony's like, what happened to going to Donna Faye's house? And um, I don't know why I like saying it like that. Donna Faye, I just like saying it like that. Um, but nonetheless, he's like, what happened? She was like, well, I'm going to keep it real. I was outside tracking your ass because I just can't trust that you won't do no stupid stuff, you know, left to your own, you know, vices and everything. He was like, so you're just going to keep doing this to me? You're just going to keep tracking me? You know, when am I, uh, when are you going to stop doing that? She's like, well, you can, you can prove yourself to me, Tony. He's like, well, you got to give me the chance to. She was like, I did. And you failed, Tony. You failed. So now Tony wants to sit here and act like all these rules is too much for him. But Angela had to put him in check real quick. She's like, boy, you ain't got nothing to do but sit here and follow a couple of rules. The bills is paid for. Like, first of all, why aren't you inputting on this, man? You're going to be staying in this, you know, double wide, two by four. I don't need you to be putting in on some money, Tony. Like, you going to work and stuff. Like, do you... uh? contribute to the groceries you contribute to like the gas and electricity like what do you contribute to like angela you sometimes when you just old and lonely you take whatever there is for you and unfortunately angela you really gonna be putting up with this man like really she has this soft spot for him for some reason because she feels like there's some good in tony which is why she took him to go see brother joey at the church you know she's like i want to get you know but I guess a better understanding of him. And, you know, Brother Joey did kind of break Tony down. And we see that basically what it was is he'd been through a lot of shit growing up. He was getting beat up by his dad. You know, that's sad to go through. He was, you know, watching his mom get cheated on. And he has admitted basically all his relationships have failed because he was cheating. Now, here's the shit I don't like. When men want to call it an addiction. Tony, it's not an addiction to cheat. You ain't got no sex addiction. You just got an asshole addiction. That's what you are. You like messing up people's lives when I think also a lot of it too has to do with he don't like getting close to people. I'm going to pull my my uh, Yon LeVan Zed hat on. As soon as like shit starts getting real, you got to start, you know, being a real adult, get into the real world. You want to mess it up so you can go run off to the next thing while it's still good. You like stuff when it's good. When it starts going bad, you self-sabotage so you can run off to the next thing. So Angela wants to get all weepy and sad after she hears this sad story that he told, you know, Brother Joey. And, you know, the little pastor dude or whatever is like, well, you know, I you grow up with a dad who beat and stuff. You're not putting your hands on her. But, you know, what you're doing is just as bad. So now Tony's all crying and stuff, saying that he don't want to hurt Angie. You know, you know, he was trying to be all sentimental and sad and shit. When he called her Angie, not Angel. He called her Angie. You know, I don't want to do that to Angie. Like, I love her. I want to be with her. It's always that until she gives some damn rules. Now, Angela, first of all, 
Uh, you can't be, look, from one Angela to another, I'm going to need you to represent us a little bit better than that, okay? Like, you sitting here and accepting this man, talking about I wasn't was sleeping with Tony while he was messing with the prostitutes, but after that, then she started giggling and laughing. The producers had to be like, how you going to say that in the same goddamn sentence? Prostitutes and sex with Tony. Like, girl, first of all, have you been to the doctor yet? You better go to the OBGYN and get your shit checked immediately. Ain't no telling what he passing on. Um... But now it's like, oh, she's going to give him another chance. And you're sitting there, oh, I got to track him. I got to, you know, make sure he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. Like, he's a grown-ass man. Quit treating him like he's a son. Like, are you going to continue to do that for what? The what, next 10, 15 years, the little bit of left, life you got left? That's just going to keep doing, Angela? Like, nah, miss me with that BS. So let's move on to Marcelino and Brittany. Y'all, we see another sad episode with Brittany. Like, I just feel for her. I really do. So she pulled up the, uh, I guess, whatever she could pull up at the courthouse about her kids, the adoption and everything uh, and stuff. But because she was a juvenile and because it was the whole adoption stuff, most of it is closed. But what she could find out was what they, I guess, the process of what the agency was doing. And at one point, they tried to reach back out to the father and have him, you know, take uh, guardianship of the kids. So she's like, no, like, wait a minute, no. They realized this man was 30 years old and I was 14, 15 pregnant with this man's two kids. And y'all going to give that, the, my kids to him? Like, I can understand the panic that she has. Like, obviously there's something wrong here. And th I literally just watched the freaking Lifetime movie the other day called, oh, don't take my daughter. And the goddamn state was trying to allow the dad who rapes the mother guardianship of the daughter. She got raped, ended up pregnant, and she decides to keep the baby. And the dude found out and tried to come back to get his rights as a father. And the state was actually getting ready to let him do it. Because to them, in this, the, the, uh, the scene was like, they prefer a rapist father than, a non, than an absent father. Are you kidding me? That's literally is basically what this situation is. But all Mar she's explaining all this to Marcelino. And all Mar Marcelino could think about is cha-ching, cha-ching. Like, oh my, this is going to take a long time. And there's only a bit of money that can go out each month. Well, if that is so, because Brittany ain't stopping. Like, it's not happening. Marcelina, you're going to have to get up off your ass, get away from that poker table, and go find you a real 9-to-5 job. Like, you just can't be sitting here be comfortable. Now that poker's on a downswing, I'm going to need you to find a different occupation, something that's going to pay the bills, and then some, because you got a baby on the way, too. So then, you know, Marcelina's also worried that she's going to get hurt and stuff like that. But I can really appreciate that Brittany's trying to get you know, find out where her kids are at and just know that they're okay. Um, so then she ends up looking on the computer, you know, to see what's going on with the dude. They keep bleeping his name now, I'm sure for legal reasons. But she looked him up on the com computer and guess where this nigga is at? In the goddamn penitentiary. He landed his ass right back in jail. She said the last time she even saw him was when he was stealing a TV. Uh, he got busted, stealing a TV out the office room. And so that's the last time she saw him. But when she pulled his records up, he is due for probation or like uh, they said like PED, parochial estimated date or something, was literally the next month. So she knows where he's going to be at and the date and she knows the time you got to report there. So she's like, I have no idea what I'm going to say to him, what I even want to say to him. But now she's older. She can defend herself. She's not easily manipulative, uh, uh, manipulated by this man. Like she's going to have a lot to say to this man. And he might also know what they did with the kids since they did try to contact his ass, you know, before the whole foster system thing. Like, I just feel like that's really fucked up. Like, some the foster care system in America really is shit. And it's it's horrible. Like, it really is. Um, But and I just saw, like, watching Britney, like, tear up. Like, it's not fair. Like, why does this keep happening to me? You know, people in life say, like, you know, you were a child. You know, people took advantage of you. Like, you... It's not your responsibility to take on that hurt that people gave you. And it's like, if that's so true, then why am I still getting punished for, you know, the bad shit that other people are doing? And like, that just, it broke my heart when that, when she, like, it was just, you could tell, like, she been through some stuff, y'all. She had been through some shit. And I'm glad to see her, you know, at least in a better position in her life. And she's come out on the other end of it. So let's get into uh, Lamar and Andrea. Now, Lamar tried to do something nice, taking Andrea out to dinner. He's like, you know, I want to show her, you know, I still care. Plus, he's trying to, you know, basically move her up so he can slide on into the bed real quick because he's been sleeping on the couch since he got to Utah. So, 
he gets some spaghetti and meatballs and they start talking and stuff. And basically, you know, Andrea out of nowhere is kind of like, you know, you need to be a better man. You know, I'm tired of sleeping alone. He's like, whose decision was that? And, you know, she's trying to get him to move to Utah, but he can't do that. He wants to be in L.A., obviously. He's got school. He's working. And she's like, look, one of us needs to make a decision on where we're going to be at. And he's like, well, I can't just up and leave. And then it becomes a debate of, well, Lamar, you're not doing what you're supposed to be. He's like, what do you mean? Like, I literally got straight out of jail and went to a family taking care of somebody others, some other woman's kids, you know, right out of prison. He's known prison all his life. And then Andrea, this is where I got a bone to pick with you because you sitting here confessional being like, oh, when he was locked up, you know, I, it was all about me 24 seven. Well, no nah, shit, Sherlock, he ain't got nothing else to do. What else he supposed to do in prison? Like, of course, it can all day, every day, it's going to be about you because he has nothing else to do. But now you want to sit there and be mad and say like, oh, you're not appreciating me, especially after everything I went through, you know, standing beside you while you was in prison. But nobody told you to be the dumbass to go find some jailbird and, you know, stick beside him for seven years and then get knocked up in the goddamn janitor's closet at that. Like, didn't nobody tell you to do no stupid shit like that. So you can't be mad at him because you made those decisions. And you want to say to yourself, oh, now that he's getting more independent, it's his brother, it's his family. Like, you sound really stupid, Andrea. Like, he should, everything can't revolve around you. That's the problem. You thought he was going to come out of jail. You were going to make him a change man, convert him to Mormonism, you know, show him the, the better side of the world, you know, give him this whole brand new life. And that's not what it is. He's a grown ass man. This is not a mission, Andre. This isn't some like little church mission that you're going on. He has feelings. He has his own free will. Like, and if he wants to go play a goddamn game of basketball after he took care of your kids, sent you some money, he's not a deadbeat. He takes care of Priscilla. Like, you mad because he wants to go play basketball with his homies? Like, it can't be about you 24-7. And I feel like you got it so messed up because that's what you were so used to in the beginning was him constantly calling you, checking on you, not having any other distractions. But now he's independent. And you don't like that low-key. You low-key don't like the fact that he has some other reliable sources than you. You can't, oh, like, oh, I'm just getting heated thinking about it because, Andre, you sound so stupid. Like, he's like, you really going to sit there and, you know, you know how many women would be, you know, thankful for a man like me, taking care of their kids, you know, everything like that. I do everything for you. And she's like, well, then go find it then. Go find her. He's like, I don't want no other woman, like, besides you. Like, he was trying to say that. So she's like, look, hear me out. What about divorce? And the word divorce just sent Lamar into shock. He's like, uh -uh, I don't want it. I don't like hearing it. He's like, you know, growing up, you know, I watched all the men in my life give up super easy. That's not going to be me. And I can appreciate that. I do believe Lamar has, you know, very good principles. He's morally not corrupt. Like, the jail system didn't totally fuck him up, you know. So I can appreciate Lamar and Andre. You need to back off and, you know, loosen up the reins. Because the more you push and push and push, is the more it's going to make him pull away. That's just, that's just what it is. So, uh, who else was on this episode? Uh, we went through Angela and Tony, Lamar, Barcelino. Oh, let's get into John. Okay, John is in the halfway house, you guys. John was able to get out of jail, and I guess they sentenced him to like 90 or 60 days of rehab. So he's at the little rehab building, and his sister came by to visit. They're sitting outside talking. She's checking up on him. She understands he's had this battle with, you know, drugs for a minute now, and she's just glad to see that he's, you know, doing better. So she's talking to him like, okay, what's the plan from now? And like, how did you even get in this place, you know, here again? What happened? So he explained to her, you know, he got in his feelings about watching Lacey get married. And, you know, it made him start drinking. So he got behind the wheel, drove, and got busted with drugs. He's like, you know, it was kind of good for me. You know, I needed it. I need to be busted, you know, so I can get my shit together. And so she's like, so what's going to happen the next time those feelings, you know, about Lacey come up? And he's like, I don't know, you know, I feel like once I can get her back with me and, you know, have her ditch the dude, Shane. And she's like, the sister, even just the, hearing the word Lacey, like, you could tell, just pisses her off on the inside. But she did a very good job of hiding it. And she very eloquently said, you know, I paraphrase, basically was, I ain't like that bitch now. And 15, laters, uh, uh, 15 years ago, I didn't like that bitch then. That's basically what it was. She says Lace is manipulative. She knows how to pull, you know, certain strings when it comes to John. And we see it. We saw how she was all this season. She does it with Shane. She knows how to play the men. So she keeps them dangling just enough 
So they come around and, you know, John's like, maybe I'm just stupid, but, you know, I love her. I can't help who I love. So the sister was like, well, you get arrested again. There's no guarantee that, you know, me, mom and dad will be there for you. Like, how are you going to tell the parents that you're back with her? And he's like, I don't know, but, you know, she's like, plus, by the way, she's married. He's like, man, I don't know why he, she married that dude. Like, what she marry him for? And it's like, John, now you and Lacey clearly had a toxic relationship you like the fact that for some part of the day, she makes you not feel like a drug addict. She makes you feel like a real man because she knows how to stroke your ego. And then Lacey at some part of the day likes the fact that you make her feel pretty. You possibly dick her down on the regular because you ain't got nothing else to do. And then back in the day, she said you were a good provider even though you were on drugs. So y'all find the little things in each other that you like and you keep, you know, rewarding those little good things. And then y'all mess up the whole other, the, other relationship with all the effed up stuff that y'all do and that's what keeps y'all that's what keeps y'all going y'all are fucked up 80 percent of the time but the 20 percent of the time that y'all are good y'all hang on to that and that's what you dangle in front of the other person you know to keep them around another day another week another year john listen to your sister turn around and run because lacy if there's anything lacy would do that bitch will get you locked up again for sure for sure, okay? I, I'm i literally counting down the days waiting for it to happen. But he says, oh, I don't know what it is. I love her. You know, I like the challenge. And when he said that too, that just made me think, another thing is, it's his pride and his ego. It's the fact that another man got Lacey. For him, I swear, because if Lacey was single right now, he wouldn't be sitting there pursuing her like this. He wouldn't be so adamant about getting her back. It's the fact that he can't stand another man is not going to help basically the dust off that pussy like it's good old smoky words knocking the dust off that thing because it ain't him he mad somebody else is doing it so now he gonna try to run in and be like some like captain save a hoe from shane like out of the out of the two of them shane is definitely better than john than john um but yeah uh so speaking of shane he tries to do something sweet for lacy takes her out skating Basically, he was buttering up before the downfall of admitting that uh, he cheated on her. So she's all, this is sweet. You know, I love him. It's perfect. We should bring the kids here. Like, you know, everything's right. And so he sits her down and, you know, was like, I got something to tell you. So then she's like, what? And he was like, you know, I was drunk and I was intoxicated, you know, and one thing led to another. And she's like, what happened? He's like, I cheated on you. Really? Like, she called him pathetic. Do I feel sorry for her? No, I don't. And I know it's sad to say, I just don't. I y'all, I don't. Cause you sitting here doing some shady shit, texting John behind Shane's back, and I guarantee had John pushed up on you a couple more seconds in that one scene in the car, you would have kissed his hat, kissed his behind. Y'all would have pulled up behind the goddamn Chuck E. Cheese and started fucking by the garbage can. Like that, that dude knows how to push up on you, right? All it takes is a little bit of time. Um, so she pulls off and leaves Shane um you know at the damn skating ring but if you ask me uh Shane you should have told her I know that's wrong to say but all that's gonna do is give her a reason to start running back towards John and she's gonna start being petty to get back at you she's gonna go text him see what he's doing start crying oh my god Shane did this to me and that's gonna be the reason she can do a, basically a revenge cheat on your ass Shane you should have kept that to yourself you should have kept it to yourself homeboy uh, so last but not least, let's get into Michael and Sarah. So we pick up where basically Sarah is yelling at Michael's ass. What about the other bitches? What bitches you got at the hotel, Michael? Is it Megan? Is it Megan? No, it ain't Megan, bitch. It's Maria. So Maria, y'all are, y'all, I don't like this. I don't like this Maria girl. I don't like her. I don't know who she thinks she is. You've been here for what, all of what, six months, eight months to a year. I'm gonna give it at the most but you've been the side chick too you was the side hoe you was the underground hoe what 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 do we call you did if sarah's the wife and megan was the side chick what does that make you that makes you the trick i guess you the trick so you ain't got no pull in this like nowhere i don't know where you got all this bass in your your voice from and all this damn puff in your chest maria but you need to back the hell up thinking that you know all the situation between michael and sarah besides what he's feeding your ass so after Sarah stops yelling at him and says, you know, what are you doing? Like, you try to take my daughter to go see some other bitch at the hotel. He wants to turn it into, oh, you jealous? You mad because I got another woman? No, Michael. 
she's pissed off because you keep doing disrespectful ass shit like this and thinking there's nothing wrong with it. You don't get to disappear for four months, not checking on your kids, not contribute to your kids, pop up and think I'm going to hand them over to you to go take them to a hotel for another bitch to hang out with. And especially a bitch I haven't even met yet. So first of all, you ain't even taking this girl seriously because if you really wanted a serious ass relationship with her and you wanted it to be successful, you would have took Maria to go meet Sarah first off if you really wanted to see your kids like that. Michael, you don't get to do the fucked up shit you do, pop up and still get to claim res fatherly responsibilities. So after Michael called Sarah out her name, she said, oh no, she slammed that door on the back of Michael's ponytail so hard. Y'all, I'm going to start calling him Thumper because that damn ponytail looks like a bunny tail. It, the, the, pony, the ponytail is dry as fuck. It looks like straw. You honestly need some blue magic. Um, for any of you white viewers, that's some grease uh, for, for the niggas. So, uh, yeah, she closed the door on him and started going in the room. And it's like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Finally, she cooled down and went back outside. She's like, look, simple yes or no questions. Let's start with that. Yes or no. Did you tell Aviana you were coming for Father's Day? And he's outside talking to producers like, oh, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. I'm talking about the kids. She's trying to make it about bitches and niggas or whatever. And it's like, answer the question, Michael. Did you tell Aviana you were coming? And then at that, she paid for the ticket, sent you the information, and then your ass still couldn't show up? That's the stuff we be talking about, Michael. You are flaky as fuck. You don't get to choose when you walk in and out of your daughter's life and be mad that they don't they're not cool with you no more or that they're not comfortable with you no more and so now she's screaming like look at you i don't want you nigga he like you want me i know you still want me and that's what you want michael and you want her to still want you that's why you bring the bitches maria around and you got megan around because you know as long as you piss her off that gives you license to do all the fucked up shit that you doing now and so now Sarah's off in the damn grass crying like oh my god i don't know what to do i don't know what to do and i fell for her in that moment because you just see she was she's putting up with his shit because she genuinely does want her daughters to have a relationship with Michael. But at what point as a mother do you keep putting up with the stuff just for further disappointment of your child? Like, and then obviously her emotions are in it because she was married to this nigga. Like, it's a detriment to her mental health. And I'm sure that has a lot to why she's probably subconsciously saying messed up shit around Aviana and she's picking up on that vibe. But Michael, bro, you a dog. You a dog. And there's no other way around it. And you want to be mad and run back to Maria talking about, oh, Sarah on her shit again. Um, and then he was like, oh, if I'm so effed up, why are you trying to force a relationship with me? Why are you trying to force the relationship? She wants a relationship for you and her kids. That's it. That's all she wants, Michael. And because even though you a fucked up nigga and you might be a fucked up boyfriend and partially a fucked up dad, like... She still wants there to be some type of connection between the two. But every time she gives you the opportunity to not do the effed up stuff, you always choose the wrong choice. You mess up. Just like it, it, for Father's Day. Don't tell your daughter you're going to show up for Father's Day and then don't. And then flake. Like, that's so messed up. And then you want to try and slide past it and turn around, manipulate her to, oh, you want to make it about Maria. You want to make it about other females. That's why you mad. No, no, I, no, she don't want you. I don't think Sarah don't want you. She wants you to be better. She wants you to be, you know, the person that she you originally were in the beginning of y'all's relationship. She wants, you know, the good Michael back. And I think that's what hurts her a lot because she keeps trying to give him the opportunity to do that. But you keep failing, my nigga. You fail the test every goddamn time. So he takes a taxi back to the hotel and he want to run to my, oh, where Maria, where your sexy ass at? She's like, I'm by the pool. Oh, I'm going to sit by your fine. Oh, he makes me sick. Makes me sick. He picks the most insecure women. He knows how to feed their heads. Maria, you ain't no different. You was not no different. You about to end up like Megan. We see on the goddamn preview, Megan about to piss on a damn pregnancy test stick. So, bitch, you next. So, nonetheless, he feels around what happened with Sarah. She's like, oh, Sarah's so sad. What type of woman sits by waiting for months, you know, for a man that doesn't want her? What the... She obviously sitting by waiting on something. He's obviously feeding her some type of shit to keep her waiting. Like, are you dumb? Like, partially she waiting too because there might be a little bit of hope, but that ain't got nothing to do with it. And if she is waiting, bitch, that got nothing to do with you. So... 
Then she's like, oh, it's okay. It's not your fight, Michael. You're not doing nothing wrong. What do you mean he ain't doing nothing wrong? Like, Maria, girl, girl, this is sad at this point. He ain't doing nothing wrong. You don't think it's wrong that he ain't, the first thing he did when he got out of jail was run off to go see Megan's ass versus going to see his kids? You don't think it's wrong that he got cash out women got dang $1,200 a month and none of them went to formula, none of them went to diapers, none of them went to helping Sarah? Like, you don't see nothing wrong in that? Like, Maria, you is foul as fuck. So then she's like, oh, it's okay. We're going to figure it out. He's talking about taking it to the courts. And she's like, well, you know, if you, we're here for a couple more days. He's like, if it don't work out, you know what we're going to do. She's like, oh, we can go to plan B. She'll be getting a visit from me. The fuck I am? I thought was sir. And Maria tried to step one foot on my stairs. It would be on and popping. On and cracking. The fuck you are coming to see me? Uh-uh. She said, I plan to take a visit. And go say what? And say what, Maria? Like, I'm confused what you think your part in this is. Bitch, know a whole position. Like, I, uh, who said this on IG? Bitch, why you so excited to be a side chick? Sit your ass down, coleslaw. Like, girl. Damn, side piece. Stay in the side please spot. God damn, let me get off of here because, oh, Lord Jesus, I can't stand. This show be getting under my skin, but it's so damn entertaining at the same time. Y'all drop down in the comments, tell me what you thought about the episode. That's where it ended. Tell me uh, how you feel about this Michael Sarah situation. Is Maria out of fucking line? I think so. Y'all drop down in the comments, let me know. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I will catch you guys on the flip side. Deuces.